guitar player living in San Francisco, and I walked into a music store on Haight Street where a guy named Rodney Alvin was building guitars and teaching guitar making. I fell in love with the idea and signed up and made a couple guitars. From there, I've pretty much been on my own, although I did work for a year or so in Boston with um, a guy named Owen Shaw. He made violins and viola de gambas and taught me how to uh, carve tops for archtop guitars. We had an order for a seven string, or he did, and he passed it on to me, and that was my first archtop guitar. But there weren't any books really on the subject. There was a one-page article on Jimmy D'Aquisto from New York uh, that I kind of read every day, and but um, that's how I started. Well, an archtop guitar is a guitar that was developed in the 30s, um, originally as a rhythm guitar to play with big bands. They have a big chunky rhythm sound that could cut through a lot of the, the sound of a big band. But in later development, they really are used more for um, solo jazz guitar and bebop guitar. Their, their voice is unique. Um, and lends itself to that kind of music. While you can play any kind of music on any kind of guitar, the arch top really uh, lends itself to jazz and um, improvisation. Of course, the overall um, beauty of the guitar is determined by the arch of the back and the front, and you know those proportions, as far as I'm concerned, matter a lot. And uh, you know, what you're looking for in a guitar is something that is really sensual. And that usually comes with curves. So uh, that goes as far as, uh, you know, with many things, but certainly I feel it, it, guitars need to be sensual, and they, they generally are. The flat top guitars, although they are slightly um, arched in the top as well, this is done through bracing and uh, the bending of the wood. While an arch top guitar is carved from solid wood into its curved form, in the arch top guitar is, generally has F holes. And uh, you know, for those of you that have seen people with um, guitars that look a little like violins, they're um, they're kind of a bridge between the violin and the guitar family in that they're made similarly and with similar materials as violins and cellos, being maple back and sides and uh, spruce tops. Kind of a departure from standard guitar uh, construction, whether it be classical or steel string, into uh, arch top, which is a specific uh, type of guitar with a carved back and top. Although I've, I've met many builders in my day and we, we all come up with a lot of our own methods, it's pretty standard that you start out with deciding what kind of wood you're going to use, you know, and that is based basically on what kind of tone you're looking for. Also aesthetics are involved, you know, people want a dark guitar or, you know, an archtop guitar. I always make them out of maple and uh, spruce, but they can be colored in various ways. So the, once the wood is selected, then, you know, we start gluing uh, the top together and once that's done, you start shaping and carving and um, spending, you know, many hours uh, fine-tuning these pieces. Details need to be decided as far as the binding or the outer edge of the guitar has a, usually a decorative uh, strip, whether it's uh, plastic, I use wood. Not only does it look great, but it protects the guitar from absorbing moisture into the end grain of the top and the back and uh, from getting the inevitable bangs uh, that it will receive in its life. The edge kind of protects it in a you know, relatively uh, pleasing way. So the guitar is brought together and, you know, tuned and, and finessed uh, to as high a level as I can achieve and then, um, then the finishing process begins which is generally sprayed, water-based, environmentally friendly uh, lacquer at this time and tinted or shaded uh, depending on what I feel like doing or what the customer is asking for. And then, you know, the fun part actually begins when you put the strings on <laughs> and, and all of a sudden an instrument is born. Uh, it's really kind of like a birth process. The most fun for me is, is there's a period where there seems to be a place where, you know, the accumulation of wood and metal and various parts come together, but then you put the strings on it and there's something that happens that gives it a voice that, although maybe similar in respects to guitars that I make, they still all have their own voice, just like every other family member. 
it's a really wonderful uh, time for me when the guitars are coming to that level and showing me who they really are. <laughs>